I got into stand-up comedy uh, after being soundly rejected by pretty much every uh, arts community in Seattle. Dance, acting, uh, vaudeville, uh, rap, um, gymnastics teams, um, pretty much everything. Um, and then I finally found something that had a low enough standard uh, that would allow me to perform and, and live out my dream. I actually don't like to make people laugh. Um, I like to make people cry, um, followed by laughter, so, which we in the biz call uh, cry laughter, um, um, or cry laughterly, which is cry, laugh, cry, which I'm not a big fan of. Um, tonight, you should expect some nudity. Um, I really prefer working in the nude um, when I do stand up. Uh, it's 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 freer, it lets the spirit run through you. My name is Paul Merrill, and I suffer from obsessive compulsive disorder. <laughs> Luckily, it's balanced out by a healthy dose of depression. <laughs> so like, I really want to flick this switch on and off exactly 777 times in a row. Then I think, what's the point? <laughs> I was watching the History Channel uh, the other day, and they showed a Civil War reenactment. Have you seen these before? Civil War reenactments. Yeah. The most, yeah, the most bloody, brutal, most shameful period in this country's history. And every year, thousands of people dress up in authentic Civil War uniforms and recreate it. Hooray for the Civil War! Do other countries do this? Do other countries try to recreate the worst moments in their history? They have a potato famine festival in Ireland. I'm a, I'm a dad, um, and uh, yes, yes, I'm a dad, and um, one of the biggest challenges for parents nowadays, of course, is uh, keeping your kids away from pornography, which is almost impossible when your computer is filled with bestiality videos. <laughs> it's very difficult. But I mean, kids today, kids today can see anything on the internet. You know, I mean, they see naked girls. They see the two girls in a cup. They can see two cups in a thermos. Everything you can imagine on the internet, and it's totally, it's totally different when I was a kid. I, I grew up in a more innocent time, the, the 1980s, uh, where a young man had to forage for pornography in the wild. <laughs> the first time I saw a naked woman was in a magazine that I found in a dumpster. And the name of the magazine was Pregos. Oh. Now, they say there is nothing more sensual or beautiful as a woman full with child. These people have never seen Pregos. <laughs> this was a very confusing magazine for a 10-year-old boy to find. Because the women in this magazine look nothing like the women in my life. I, my mom and my sister did not have these huge, gigantic beach ball stomachs. But my dad did. <laughs> so I brought the magazine home and showed it to my dad. And I said, Dad, What's a Pregos? <laughs> and his face just turned beet red, and he just starts quaking, and he grabs the magazine from my hand, and he, and he shakes it at me and says, this is why mommy and daddy can't have sex anymore. And he left, and he never came back. Oh, end on a sad note. Um, the other thing, I was really into as a kid 
uh, besides Pregos, <laughs> was heavy metal. I was a huge heavy metal fan. Anyone in heavy metal? Metal heads in the 80s especially? Yeah. I was obsessed with being in a heavy metal band, but none of my friends uh, could play instruments or anything, so I was forced to create an imaginary heavy metal band. Um, and my band was called the Lords of Rockville. Thank you. And you've heard it, you probably saw them on tour. Um, and I, I had to, to create everything myself. I drew you know, album covers for an imaginary band and would write out set lists. And, and um, recently I came across this old notebook of mine filled with over 7,000 songs that I wrote in the eighth grade for my heavy metal band. And just to end here, I would like to, to share one of these songs with you if it's all right. Uh, this song is called The Battle of Everrock <laughs> by Paul Merrill, age 12. <laughs> heavy metal rock, heavy metal roll, heavy metal trolls are going to eat your souls. <laughs> heavy metal east, heavy metal west. Today I got a boner during wrestling practice. I wonder if that makes me gay. No, actually that's not part of the song. That's actually something I just wrote in the, the margin. Chorus, rock, 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 everybody loves the rock. Bow down to the power of my rock, rock, rock. Guitar solo. Bass solo, breakdown. breakdown. Now the breakdown, if you're familiar, is the parts, the mellow part, the cool out stages when you get out your lighters and you put it up and you, you make out with your girlfriend if you're into that sort of thing. <laughs> I want to rock you, baby, till the morning light. How can it be wrong if it feels so right? Oh my God, I'm so horny. I wonder what girls look like naked. I want to have sex on them. No, actually, that is part of the song. Guitar solo, drum solo, flute solo, big finish. Now, I actually drew this out on a separate piece of paper, a blueprint for this. Um, but at the end of the song, a giant spaceship shaped like a guitar lands on stage. The band gets inside and flies off to Jupiter, where they will rock 250 times harder because of Jupiter's intense gravity. <laughs> also, Jupiter girls are slutty, and when we so totally see their boobies, rock. <laughs> I'm totally getting the band back together. Thank you so much. For more information, please visit our website at select